Okay, let's get started. Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time dropping into my channel, welcome. The purpose of this video is to really share with you my thoughts on my Xenostar 61 uh, and what it has enabled me to do uh, over the eight months that I've owned it as far as evolving uh, the Xenostar uh, 61 Mod 2 to meet my needs. I'm starting the process of looking for my next scope. So I really wanted to create a record of just how much I really like this scope. Uh, my next scope is going to give me a little bit more reach, but as far as a, a starting scope, and even I got a long way I can go with this scope, uh, given some of the targets I have yet to image, uh, I just wanted to share with you how I have been able to evolve it. So uh, let's take a look over here. Um, what you see here is the original scope, uh, the original dovetail, and uh, with that original dovetail, uh, when I first started out, I had a Canon 6D. Uh, I decided, because I live in a, a Bortle 9 area, to go monochrome, so I was able to add a ASI 294mm Pro camera. I was able to add an 8 position filter wheel. Um, I also purchased the adjustable field flattener with the Xenostar when I first purchased it. I've added a ZWO EAF electronic autofocuser that works great uh, with the Xenostar 61. Uh, yes, there are other options for autofocus. Um, and uh, notice down here that there was enough room for me to add a Pegasus Astro power uh, pocket power box advance and it's really helped me when it comes to managing my cable management and that's been very important when it comes time to do the meridian flip uh, so I don't have cables getting snagged and everything um, I was able to add dew heaters to it so really um, for an imaging scope uh, it's been a great scope so far I've imaged uh, M31 uh, the Heart Nebula, uh, the Soul Nebula. I'm out here tonight. I'm going to do some work. I've uh, purchased another filter. I've purchased a three nanometer, uh, three nanometer HA. So I'm going to do some work with Nina tonight and uh, Dark Customs to uh, cut uh, that into the focusing routine where I can establish the uh, offset for the three nanometer HA. I already have the offsets established for the seven nanometer uh, uh, HA filter that I have. But, um, you know, uh, when I bought this scope, I really did not know a whole lot about telescopes, aperture, focal length. Uh, I had some idea because I was a photographer before, but I didn't know how that necessarily might apply to a uh, telescope that I wanted to do some uh, deep sky object imaging. Uh, this William Optics Z61 Mod 2 uh, has been a great scope for me and again as you can see here I was able to uh, add accessories to it to the point now that it's pretty much an uh, automated night of imaging. I use nighttime imaging and astronomy also known as Nina and uh, paired with my HEQ5 Pro uh, German Equatorial mount, it's a really nice uh, setup. And so I just wanted to go on the record, if you're looking at a Xenostar Z61, 360 uh, millimeter uh, focal length, uh, focal ratio of uh, 5.9, um, you know, I wouldn't hesitate. Um, I think if you're looking at purchasing a scope, there are so many factors, including what camera you might pair it with and size of the objects uh, that you want to image um, and uh, all those factors. And that's something I'll do in the uh, uh, video I'm going to do about how I'm going about purchasing my second scope. Uh, I will do the things that probably I should have done when I purchased my first scope, but I didn't know any better because I was a beginner. And now I'm gonna take what I know and apply it to the purchase of my next scope. Uh, I'm months out from that. I'm gonna do the research now. 
and uh, over time you'll see some videos on me as how I'm progressing uh, to get that next scope. So I really just want to say William Optic Xenostar Z61 uh, Mod 2. I'm giving it a big thumbs up. Uh, if you have any doubts about it, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have a whole lot of concerns. You can see what I've been able to do here as far as adding uh, additional items to it. It's a great performer and, uh, you know, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it. Although there are a multitude of considerations when it comes to purchasing a scope. I don't know your unique uh, needs and uh, therefore, you know, uh, I just want to say uh, you, at the end of the day, you've got to be the one to uh, make that decision. Okay, so I think I've created the record around my Xenostar 61 over the last eight months. Uh, uh, it's been a great value. It's enabled me to go to an automated night of imaging and uh, the quality of the images that I'm getting, the data and everything, uh, it's uh, looking good. I'm not seeing chromatic uh, aberration. Uh, even though I believe it's an amphromatic uh, du doublet, uh, but um, you know, just a great scope. Okay, so if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up as always. Like, share, and subscribe. And uh, let's see how things happen tonight. It's a full moon, and since I have a three nanometer HA filter now, and I also have my original seven uh, nanometer HA filter, I thought I might. Uh, uh, take some images of the California Nebula, which I believe is rich in HA, and see if I can tell differences between the two filters, given that it's an almost full moon here in San Mateo, California on the 21st of November. Okay, again, uh, thank you for dropping into the channel. Till next time.